Welcome to Board Game Empire. We're going to be showing you a quick overview and review of Alliterati by Gap Closer Games. So this is uh, obviously a word game, but it's a word game that has a few um, extra twists and mechanics to make it um, a little more interesting. If you enjoy word games, you should definitely check this one out. I, I love word games and I found this to be enjoyable. Anthony enjoyed it as well. So basically, you are trying to save the books. The literati are um, basically destroying libraries and getting rid of all the books, and you're trying to save them. So you start out with, I think it's six letters. You get, I can't remember the amount of letters you start with, but you start out with a certain amount of letters, and then you're gonna be drawing seven per round. Um, and each person starts out with one of the red books, which are the burned books. And the object of the game is both or all the players have to complete both a red book and a blue book. The blue books are the waterlogged books. The red books are the burned books. And then after you both complete two of each of these books, then you pick either of the decks and you each collectively uh, separately, I guess I should say, have to, at the same round, have to complete the final chapter, which is the right side of the book. Uh, during the normal rounds, you just have to complete the left side of whatever book you have, but in the final chapter, the right side of whichever card you pull, both players have to complete that in the same round. If only one player does it, then you start all over and do the next round as normal until either both can complete it in the same round or you lose by um, too many books being burned. Once four books are burned, you're, you're, you've lost the game. And we um, had two books burned and the way that happens is there's a library in the middle of letters. You start out with three of them. As you create words during the rounds, any letters that you did not use so you wanna to try to create words with every single letter you have. You can swap back and forth between opponents, which is nice. You wanna make sure all opponents can complete all the letters they have into some sort of word. It has to be a three word, three letter word or more. It can't be nouns, um, things like that, unless it pertains to the card. Like he had movies, so Game of Thrones would work for that. Um, and so any letters that you have left over go in the middle. You're only allowed to carry over three max in the library each round. So any you have over three, you'll turn them over, um, choose one of those, put it uh, in the burn tracker. Then the rest, you go down to three, the rest go into the discard bag. So you have two bags. One bag is used as your draw bag because you'll be drawing new letters each round and one bag is used as your discard. And if you run out of letters to draw, you just switch over and draw from the discard bag. The twist in this game is, other than the library and the letters where you have to, um, oh, you do have to discard the letters you use. I forgot to say that when you complete your book. So this one is, all vowels must have the heart symbol. So you, as you see, some of these letters have different symbols. There's hearts, clouds, swords, and compasses. So some of the cards, a lot of the cards require certain sets of shapes or a certain number of the same shape, um, et cetera, as well as you happen to have a certain amount of letters to form the, the subject. This one is just all the vowels must be hearts. It has to be eight letters plus, and that does not have to be one word. That can be several words, as long as it's eight letters or more you're using that pertain to that card. And then any additional letters you have, you're just gonna make random words with it, so you're using all your letters. So that's how you complete that card, but once whatever words you use to complete your card, you're gonna take those and put those in the discard, so you're automatically gonna have less letters for the next round. So as you can see, it's you will be drawing seven new letters each round, but it gets a little, as you complete books, it gets a little harder for a round or two to complete, to do words because you have less letters. Um, 
There's also wild. Some of them are blank on both sides, so that could be anything. As you can see, they have all the symbols on the bottom, so they count for any symbol. And then you have letters with all the symbols, so you do have to use that specific letter, but they have all the symbols on them, so that kind of helps you in the instance where you have to have a certain amount of symbols. Um, they are different levels in this game. There's normal, hard, and legendary. We did the normal. <laughs> Um, we did win, but it was difficult. It got more difficult, and I'll tell you why here in a minute with the alliterati. Um, but there's only a certain amount of letters you can carry over in your library, and the more difficult the level, the less letters you can carry over. If you do legendary, you can only have one letter in your library. Um, burn letters allowed. Oh, we're actually allowed three, not four. See, we didn't even get to that point, so... We, we won with just two. It's three letters are the max burn letters allowed um, before you lose the game. Um, and you get a certain amount of books per player. In the normal round, you only have to do two books. Hard, you have to do four. Legendary, you have to do six books. So that would take a while. That would take a long time to play those. Um, and so it's... It's... It sounds easy, but it's actually pretty difficult to complete these books because it's certain themes, certain sh uh, shapes you have to have, certain amount of letters. So it gets a little tricky, and you you have the literati also working against you because at the end of each round, after you've managed to survive, in the first few rounds, you're just trying to survive by using all your letters and trying not to burn any books. Each round after you've done all that, then you have three minutes. I should say that each round is three minutes. We used a, a timer, like a digital timer instead of this, because when you're in the heat of the game, you're not going to be staring at this thing the whole time. So it would be easy not to even know when the time is up. So we used a digital timer. Um, but each round you're going to be pulling an alliterati villain, and you have to do what they say at the bottom of the card. So this one is, as a team, discard one noun, one adjective, and one verb. So you could see they're also taking letters away from you, which makes it even more difficult. And even worse, if you have more than one villain, so say you already had this villain from a previous round, you have Fiora Ironclad, because you did her before. You pull her again, now it's a chain effect. You have to do all of them, all of them. Um, so if we pulled another one of this one of this one, this would be three in a chain. So for this round, if we pulled her again, we would not only have to, at the end of the upcoming round, if no one binds a book, every player must discard three letters. So you want to make sure someone binds a book, which means what that means is completing that left side of the, their card. If not, if nobody's able to do it, then um, you have to, every player has to discard three letters and that really hurts. <laughs> then um, you would also have to discard all letters in the library as well as all other copies of those letters that are in play, max three of any letter. So if you had a Z, A, and E or whatever, every letter that matches that in your play area you also have to get rid of for a max of three of each letter that is also that one was painful because especially if there's vowels you need all the vowels you can get <laughs> so those alliterati really put they really hinder your game <laughs> and you're pulling one out every round so I can't imagine doing any higher than normal in this game like we were not we're just I'm pretty good at words but it's not even about being um, having a good vocabulary or being good at scrambling letters and making words you also have to it's a little bit of luck because you're drawing and it's you're at a time crunch you only have three minutes and you're helping your opponents or not opponents you're actually they're you're cooperative you're helping your other players to form their words and you're doing all this in three minutes and you're working together to flip letters back and forth because 
there, that's the, really the only way to do it. You do have to share letters because it, it makes all the difference. So it was a lot of fun and we, it's, it's definitely unique. It's, it's very unique game and it does keep you on your toes. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, the literati really make it hard, it, it make it hard, but it also makes it a lot of fun because if without that, I do think it would be kind of repetitive and boring, yeah. but the literati, you just don't know what's coming out. And then there's the chain effects and it's like, so, you know, there's going to be something bad happening to hurt you every time. So, so what did you think about this game? Uh, I really like the theme. I really like the illustration. The illustration is phenomenal. Um, I mean, it's really cool designs and everything. The component quality. Now we have the deluxe edition. So the components are phenomenal. Love the box and everything, how it slips out to get all that stuff, like a book or, you know, some. But really like the components. Um, so the mechanics, uh, I like the mechanics. It does feel like it might get repetitive if you play it too often. So this is a game that you pretty much will play probably like once a month, maybe, or twice. Um, because a lot of times once you've... Uh, you know, shown some of the cards, you will have some some ideas of, you know, words that you were used prior. And so, but I know it's kind of like luck-based because you're getting different uh, letters and everything. But the replayability, um, I do think it's replayable. Uh, like I said, but I think it's just, uh, it kind of is replayable for like certain amount of times. And then, you know, you just... Uh, hold it and then you play again eventually. Um, but overall, I really like this game. Um, I think that this is a game we're gonna keep because we. this is like one of the um, most rare, none of the other uh, word games we have have this type of mechanic or illustration or style. So I'm giving it like an eight out of 10. Uh, I think it's a phenomenal game. I think that this is one that we're gonna keep because uh, there's not many word games that are really stand out. Uh, this one is one of the ones that does, so highly recommend. I also give this an eight. I We had a lot of fun. It was hard. I didn't think we were going to be able to pull it off. No, I didn't think so either. <laughs> we were, it was the last minute we pulled off being able to both complete that um, final chapter, which was this one, actually. Yeah, the movies. It was movies, TV shows, and theater productions, and... It had to have five of the same shape. So even if it was hard enough coming up with the names of movies, even thinking of in the crunch in three minutes, just it's weird how your mind goes blank when you're in a time limit. But then on top of that, having to figure out how to get five of one shape. So that's where switching tiles back and forth came in handy. Because even if I had the letters, I'll, I didn't have five of the same shape, but we were able to, through switcheroo, and luckily get just enough five of the same shape. Um, I think I did hearts, and he did the little swords. <laughs> Thanks, thankfully, we also had some wilds that we were able to hold on to. So it was, I mean, I'm guessing there's probably some literati that make you take away your wilds. Yeah. I can almost did, guarantee it. We didn't get the wilds towards the end of the game. Yeah, that's what helped. It was our last two draws yeah. that we got those wilds. And and then you have the literati making you get rid of um, tiles every turn. So that made it, it was really hard to figure out, even though you were only getting out the way of two or three tiles. You need all those tiles to make, especially on the final chapter, because it has to be 12 tiles or more to make up the name. So that's how he came up with Game of Thrones. I had to come up with two um, names of a title. And then there was one alliterati where it was really hard. And that one, we had to do it several times. It was... I think it was this guy. Yes. Okay, so in that final chapter, you're creating longer words because more letters you need. and But you have to break up two of your words and create one new word using those letters and discarding any excess left of those two words. So if you don't have a lot of letters and basically your only letters you had, which I was in this situation once, are used for the two words that you made, 
you're getting rid of some very important tiles that you need. <laughs> sure, you're going to be drawing seven more, but I mean, what you get is luck. And luckily, we did get some wilds. Unfortunately, I got, we got X's, J's, and K's, and that, and Z's. That kind of made it difficult. Those aren't really easy to work with, um, but they did help us in the symbols. Um, the wild, the blank wilds were really what helped because we both ended up using those. But yeah, it's a very, very unique game. It, it's very easy to learn. It's the mechanics flow smoothly. It's just uh, very difficult, even on normal, yeah, I don't think. Well. <laughs> but difficult in a good way. Like, it's just, it's a, it's a thinker. Like, you, it, and, and that three minutes goes by very fast. <laughs> I would say the 30-minute time frame, yeah. I was thinking probably, what, 40, 50 minutes is what Yeah, because we us. had to keep trying. You have to keep trying over and over for that final chapter until you both complete it. Um, unless you burn too many books, then the game's over yeah. anyway. But we got lucky and um, were able to use all of our letters less than, well, we had a few, but we never had more than three other than twice. Um, in that library and we got better and better at making sure working as a team that we used all of our letters we rarely near the end had more than one letter in there of course we've been married 20 years so uh... <laughs> yeah and we were sitting side by side it was many easier probably be a little bit more chaotic with more players and because you can put you put your letters that you're not using in the library and that makes it easier for players to grab off of but when you're sitting side by side it's kind of easier to cross-reference and say, hey, do you have an A with a heart, you know, etc. So, great game. I You should, if you like word games, definitely check this out. Even if you don't like word games and you're married to someone or play games with someone that does like word games, it's even fun because you're working together. You're yeah. not, it's not competitive. So, that you can help each other. So that's what makes it a great word game as well. Another reason we don't play a lot of the word games we have is because I usually dominate in those games. So it's not fun for them to play them. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, they like them. Like we love paperback. We play that. Inkling. It's one of my favorite games, but I usually do win <laughs> because I'm faster at, scram you know, and those games are all about unscrambling and making words. So if you're, that's if you're fast at that, of course, you're going to um, have an advantage at those type games. That's where this one kind of balances that out because it's you're working together. So um, do you have anything else you want to say? Mm -hmm. So hopefully we uh, helped you to decide whether this is a game you'd want to add to your collection. It's it's a great game in our opinion. We will put the link in the description so you can check it out for yourself. We hope you like this video. Please give us a like. Feel free to leave a comment. If you're not already, we hope you'll subscribe to our channel. We put out uh, quite a few videos each week. We're always covering new games. Uh, we do give our honest opinion, so we're not swayed by... Um, we do get... I mean, developers do send us the games most of the time. But We've given a lot of fives and fours. But we give our honest opinion on these games. So... Uh, Hopefully you value our opinion and feedback. Uh, everyone thinks differently on games, so you just take it with a grain of salt. And you'll, if you watch us long enough, you'll figure out what similarities we have to the games you like. You'll you'll learn our taste, and because we watch channels that we yeah. we pretty much know the channels that we kind of have similar tastes. So if they like a game, more than likely we're going to like that game too. So. Um, Hopefully we become one of those channels for you. So thank you again for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time.